Westworld Season 4 Episode 8 has just released on HBO Max, and in the season finale we got answers, yet also questions surrounding what the future of the world could be. In particular, there were reveals surrounding Christina and what her role is going forward, and also a focus on all the other characters during the total collapse of the current world. In this spoiler review and explained analysis, I'm going to be giving you my breakdown of Westworld Season Season 4 Episode 8, entitled Que Sera Sera, alongside discussing my general thoughts towards it. But before I get into it, if you want to see more videos on the Season 4 finale of Westworld, and predictions for Season 5, then don't forget to support this upload by giving it a like rating, subscribing to the channel, and turning on your notifications. Also, feel free to check me out on Twitter, Facebook, Reddit, and Instagram at Cortex Videos, which is all linked in the description below. But without further ado, let's dive into my review and explained video for Westworld Season 4 Episode 8. So in the Westworld Season 4 finale, we essentially end where it all began. Of course, in Season 4, the writers have been reflecting, reversing, and revisiting the thematic and story threads of the original season, but posing ideas on where this show is all going to come to an end. We saw this with Christina waking up and visually reminding us of those original narrative beats and loops with Dolores, and then also with characters like the Man in Black re-embracing that violent side he grew into within the original park. And it was quite clear that Holores built a reversed Westworld in the real world, with the humans being controlled this time around. But after this final episode, we're seeing the very idea of loops being used as a test to work out whether there is any hope for the hosts and humans in the world to come. So let's get into all of the reveals in this season 4 finale, and discuss exactly what this ending might mean for the show's future. So we begin after the events of the last episode, with chaos now spreading throughout New York City, and apparently it's actually cities according to Holores, which we learn about in one of the following scenes. But in the opening one, we see someone we've seen on the show before, and that's none other than host Rebus, or you could say Trevor, from season 1 and 2. We see the violence between the hosts and humans unfold on the streets, and Rebus along with another host gets killed by a sniper in one of the surrounding buildings. It's a young teenager who makes his way out onto the streets after everyone's dead, but before he can escape, Host Man in Black enters the scene and kills him too, following his return in the previous episode. He calls him an effing camper and steals the vehicle that he was going to flee in. We then cut to Holores, who, as predicted, is revived by one of the drone hosts and brought back with a stronger robotic body that we knew the original Dolores also had. And it's time for her to observe the destruction of that tower from last week, and also finally uncover what message Bernard had left for her on that tablet we saw him holding and recording on in the control room. As I also predicted, that message was left for Holores, and she decides to listen to it after finding out that she now can't change the tones that Host Man in Black had sent out before he blew up the tower signal. The hosts and humans are essentially fighting until death, and because the tower satellite is destroyed, that's the last command that they'll execute going forwards. But coming to that message left by Bernard, he says, This isn't the world you wanted, Charlotte, but it's the world you created. The question is, what happens next? And this brings us to the reveal surrounding what's going on with Christina, and how that links into this suggestion by Bernard, who essentially has been keeping on the path of events we've witnessed with this outcome in mind. 
Of course, last week, Teddy revealed to Christina that she didn't actually exist among the hosts and humans in the city, but she could see it all. But what was even more confusing was that she did interact with some characters in this season's narrative, and Teddy happened to be one of those individuals. So what did this essentially all lead to be? Well, the finale makes it quite clear, and I think the reveals we got surrounding Christina are actually some of the more satisfying parts of this quite mixed final episode. She says to Teddy, I'm just some program running things from behind the scenes, a machine without a body. And in saying this, she points out the maze drawing on her balcony that we saw there earlier on in the season, with Teddy reminding us that this is a map of consciousness that woke Dolores up before. And that's where things finally come to light for her, because it's revealed that Dolores didn't design or control her friend Maya and all the other characters she's interacted with. In fact, it was Christina's doing in trying to make sense of who she was, and in turn, she was talking to others as if they were herself. And that means she also drew the maze. So like in the finale of season one, where we learnt that it was her in a voice that was guiding her, she's essentially done the same thing here, but within the real world, and Hale used her as a system of control to dictate it. So it ended up being a blend of a lot of different theories that fans had, and to me, it does make a lot of sense considering what we have seen with her character. And in the scene that this cuts to, we see Holores destroying the map in the tower control room and revealing underneath one of the Dolores pearls. So Christina, or one of the Dolores pearls from season 3, has been used as a sort of controlling system for the narratives of the humans in this world. But with Christina being Dolores, she's been living a loop like the original version from the park, and it's essentially another example of a failed program to control humanity. So both Rhea Boehm and this Dolores in the system didn't work when it comes to controlling humanity for different reasons, and that is a essentially what leads to Hale taking up that message which Bernard left her and understanding that a new version of herself needs to guide this new world. So with a change of heart, Hale takes out the Dolores Pearl from the system and we see that in Christina's world, the buildings, Teddy and everything around her start to glitch out until it all goes black. And we'll come back to what this all leads to, but first let's recap the other narrative that this episode focuses is on. This involves what's next for Frankie, Caleb and Stubbs after their escape from all the chaos last week. Frankie is still dealing with her injury after those events and they all make their way to a local store to get her patched up. And in a conversation with Stubbs, Caleb tells him that he's choosing not to tell his daughter about his limited time left in order for her to believe that they will survive and make it through this. Stubbs tells him that his body is rejecting his mind, similar to what we saw unfold with James Delos back in season 2. So my prediction that this version of Caleb might be the fidelity test that works turns out to be completely wrong, and this is essentially just another case of one failing. And I guess we'll have to wait a bit longer to see William's fidelity test because we also get no sign of that here too. So I was quite disappointed that this didn't amount to anything, but I guess it was used as some sort of emotional service in the form of a host father protecting his real daughter and giving her the chance to survive in a doomed world. Again, I don't mind that, I just think that with some of the earlier episodes really making Caleb more of an interesting character, Character, that his fidelity testing might have amounted to something more this season. We'll have to see if he'll come back in season 5, and maybe we'll even find out that his test does eventually work, but for now, this seems like this is the end for this particular version of him. Anyway, the three of them do make it to the store, and once Caleb deals with Frankie's wound, a human still carrying out the tones that William sent via the tower makes it inside, and Stubbs' 
attempts to kill him. But before he can, Clementine arrives and kills the both of them. So that's it for Stubbs this season too, and we don't know whether he'll ever be rebuilt before the end of the show. After taking care of him though, Clementine wants Frankie to tell her where the resistance or outliers are, and mentions it being somewhere off the grid. And after a fight that follows between Clementine and Caleb, Frankie ends up shooting Clementine after previously telling her that she had no bullets left. I must admit, it's quite a corny scene with not the greatest of staged action, but I guess the mention of the outliers being off the grid, Frankie eventually leaving to go to them, and also with Caleb being another failed fidelity test, it suggests that if we do get a final season, that this will be a part of that going forward. I mean, hopefully, because we've waited so many years for an answer surrounding William's fidelity test, and there was not even a post credit scene here to suggest suggest where we are going with that or anything else. We'll have to see, but I hope that these don't just become lost threads that we'll never see again. But coming now to the final act of episode 8, we get the final confrontation between Holores and Host Man in Black. Host William makes his way to the Hoover Dam after dealing with Season 2's Craddock and a few other hosts, and he has to do so on horseback after they manage to destroy his vehicle in the process. He picks up a pair of glasses that a host was wearing, and this allows him to see Hale, with their conversation confirming that Host William is attempting to destroy the Sublime, while Holores is going to try to stop him. Nearby, he spots a white and black horse, and appropriately takes the black one. Now, I've heard a lot of people mention that it makes no sense for William to arrive at the Sublime before Hale on horseback because he was in New York and then all of a sudden he arrives at the dam in Nevada even before her. On first watch, I completely agreed and it did take me by surprise that they would miss this out and have him fast travel there, but on rewatch, it's pretty clear that he shot Craddock and the other hosts in a quite similar colour graded location. And he left New York, presumably the night before, or on the morning of this same day, if we consider the opening sequence. So with that in mind, he was essentially travelling to this location all throughout the day, and used a horse only for the last part of his journey. And Hale only set off in her aircraft at the middle of that same day. So on rewatch, that is now less of an issue, and I would recommend giving it another watch so that these initial problems are fleshed out. But anyway, when Host William does arrive at the Hoover Dam facility, he starts shutting down the Sublime in the aim to erase all the host and guest data stored on that system. Holores shows up while this is happening, and we eventually get the fight that the last few episodes have been building towards. They take this fight outside of the facility, and Hale tells him that this isn't the world she wanted, which brings us to the rest of Bernard's message, which we apparently didn't hear in full. Bernard said, This world holds no more hope for us, but there's still hope for the next one. A test run by her if she chooses to. If you choose to give her that choice, you can't miss. Reach with your left hand. And with Host Man in Black about to terminate Hale, who is now out of bullets and has nowhere to go, she reaches with her left hand to find the gun, one that we saw Bernard leave in that tunnel in the previous episode. She shoots William and says, I choose to give her the chance. I hope she takes it. So I was right in my predictions video in saying that Holores would give Christina, or this version of Dolores, that chance to build a new world, and with season 4 being titled The Choice, it makes sense that we led to this, and that Bernard himself saw this as the only option. If anyone's going to give someone else the chance to build a new world after the chaos of this one, it's the person who currently controls it. And with that, Hale cuts open Host William's head, destroys his pearl, and makes her way to the Sublime Control Room. So that at least gives us more hope that the William we could see in the final season is that Fidelity version from the Season 2 post credit scene. The question is, who is running those tests? Well, I do have some theories, but I'll save them for my Season 5 predictions video later in the week. 
but after all of this happened, Dolores eventually uploads the Dolores Pearl we saw her take from under the map in the tower and deactivates herself near a surrounding river. And this leads to the eventual ending that in my opinion makes a lot of sense if we consider where this show has always been going. So in the ending, Holores has made her choice and we get a final scene with Christina and Teddy in this system once her pearl has been plugged into the Sublime. Christina recognises that they are now in the Sublime and she confirms that this version of Teddy is also her own projected version of him from her previous memories and says that the real Teddy is somewhere else in the Sublime. This version tells her to search for him and suggests that she should let the humans go and not bring the problems of their kind into this world. He also says they're not like us. Their codes are written in their cells, they'll never change. And she replies, we could still see. And when Teddy asks how she could do this, she says, one final test, a dangerous game of my own. And just like in the way she brought Teddy back, she could remember and use those memories and the data in the Sublime to essentially test whether humans and hosts can really get along. Similar to how Bernard tested all the possibilities and outcomes of what we saw unfold in Season 4. And with this in mind, Teddy fades away and a new version of Dolores in her original outfit appears, walking through the devastation of Hale's previous world. But the setting is then also changed by this new Dolores, with the final shot being of her standing in the original Westworld Park. She says at the end of the episode, sentient life on Earth has ended, but some part of it might still be preserved. In another world, my world, there's time for one last game, a dangerous game with the highest of stakes. Survival or extinction, this game ends where it began, in a world like a maze that tests who we are. That reveals what we are to become, maybe this time we'll set ourselves free. So we've got a version of the Westworld Park operating in the Sublime, with Dolores testing whether humans and hosts can actually coexist, and if there's a way of making that work in the real world. And this will likely be the final game in Season 5, if we do get that season greenlit. Something to know is that there is literally a number 5 on the front of the Westworld train, and it would completely make sense if this was the last season. I can understand that some are questioning whether they will do a Season 5, but with Dolores specifically mentioning one last game, and also with the combined viewership of streaming and live TV being much higher for Season 4, then I think it's a no-brainer for them to announce a final season. We'll have to see, but that's just something to keep in mind if you think this is truly the end of this show. What is clear though is that the questions this show has always posed surrounding free will and consciousness are still being tackled, but the force behind whether that can work involves hosts and humans overcoming their history of violence. Can they live in a world together and was their violent side always encoded in their programming? The final moments of this season pose that as the main question going into a potential season 5 and does so with a setup we are all familiar to. The original Westworld Park. Humans have reached their last days on Earth and sentient life there will soon be gone too. But in this new world within the Sublime, which includes the hosts who originally went there and all the guest data that was stored on that system, we might get an answer to these central questions. Can this sublime version of Westworld really determine whether the worst instincts of humans and the species it gave birth to can be overcome? It's clear that there's going to be one last dangerous game ahead, one that's familiar, yet one that's going to be even more important. And I honestly quite like that setup. The show has always been one that loops on itself, and one where past and present are used to restructure and critique the nature of our biggest questions. And we now find ourselves back at the beginning, but also at the beginning of the potential future. I think that's quite exciting, even if this finale wasn't up to the standard of previous episodes in season 4, and seeing Dolores waking herself up and realising that she's now the narrator makes a final season have the potential to answer all of the big questions that this show started with.
So what are my overall thoughts on this season 4 finale? Well, while I thought this was the weakest episode of the season in terms of execution, I did find it satisfying in certain ways. Westworld has always been looking at the future, even if it does also focus on the reflections of the past, and that's why we seem to be reverting back to the Westworld park. But this time, we're starting another game, a loop of testing by Dolores to determine whether this cycle can be broken. I must admit, after watching this finale twice today to really flesh out my thoughts, I did enjoy it much more on a second visit. I like that they are posing this reflective, thematic conversation and focusing on the very question we've wondered ourselves since season 1. Can humans and hosts really get along in a new world, or are they doomed to completely annihilate it? I think the final season, posing Dolores as a kind of inversed Dr. Ford, running a simulation just like they did for the original Westworld, but this time for the answers of the new world, is very poetic in that sense and it gets me excited to see what the answers may be in a final season if we did indeed get it. In fact, I like most of the narrative beats that this episode focused on. My big problem, however, is with the way the writing executed these ideas. I was excited for this episode because Jonathan Nolan was co-writing it and Richard J. Lewis was directing, two greats of the Westworld show. But to me, it didn't feel like a Jonathan Nolan written episode at times, and the clunky dialogue and rushing to the finish line didn't allow these reveals to have as much impact as they could have had. I think that if this episode had an extra 15 to 30 minutes to really smooth out some of these reveals and include less of the corny dialogue and action, Action, then it would have been a much better finale. That's not saying I didn't enjoy it though, because I must say, on rewatch, it was a much better experience. But again, I didn't feel like Jonathan Nolan was bringing his A game with some of the writing here, and it seems unlike him to force in some of the dialogue we heard, like in the fight scene with Caleb, Clementine, and Frankie. In fact, that Caleb and Frankie narrative arc could have had a better conclusion, considering I quite liked what we we saw from it towards the beginning of season 4. It's not a major problem, it just takes me out of the more interesting scenes we got here, and even those felt like they could have been managed slightly better with the writing. Regardless, this fourth season has definitely improved the conversations about where this is all going, and it was mostly thrilling and engaging like the first two season finales. It makes me wonder whether there is beauty to be found in this new version of Westworld, the statement that the original Dolores posed many times during that first season. And now we'll just have to wait and see whether those answers are solid ones, and whether the writers can patch up some of the things that haven't worked as well since season 1 and 2. I really do hope so, but as I said, I like the ideas and narrative decisions, I just wish we had slightly better execution in this season 4 finale. But that was my spoiler review and explained analysis for Westworld Season 4 Episode 8. I'm giving it a rating of 7.5 out of 10. I will be doing an extended breakdown predictions and theories video on what we could see in Season 5 if we of course get it, so look out for that and stay tuned to my channel for more breakdowns on the show. But to those who have already seen this final episode, what are your thoughts on all the events that went down and what do you think this will lead to in Season 5? Let me know down below in the comment section. For more videos on the ending of Westworld Season 4 and beyond, then subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications. Also, if you enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like rating and follow me on social media via the links in the description. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I've been Cortex, and as always, make some noise.